Hi guys, welcome back to Ixi Labs. I'm sitting here with the amazing Saku, who is the founder and CEO of Asteroid AR. Uh, and we will be talking about the very simple and unambiguous topic of how does it feel to be a woman in tech? Hi Saku, would you like to introduce yourself first before we go into that minefield? Uh, hi there, yeah. <laughs> um, well, I had kind of a weird path into tech, so I started programming as a teenager because I was just obsessed with video games. <laughs> So I was, I loved, um, you know, everything happening in 3D was really exciting. So I got into computer graphics. I only got involved in tech because I was part of the Teal Fellowship in 2011, I think, or 2012. Um, but I chose not to take it. I instead mm. went and got my degree in maths and computer science. Um, but I, I got back into AR through um, working at Oculus. So I was there when they went from 60 to 200 people, um, which was a, a very wild, that was in three months. So it was a summer. <laughs> And then I, after that, I, I worked at Andreessen Horowitz as a tech analyst, so I was researching emerging technologies in AR and VR and Bitcoin. And the thing I'm working on now, um, the company Asteroid, which does developer tools for AR developers, um, we started last year, and that's what I've been working on ever since. One, one thing I've always liked about the tech industry is, um, at least you know, in the last 10 years, it was really something that if you came from a, a weird background, mm. you could just jump in. There was almost no, um, you know, you didn't have to go get a professional qualification. You didn't have to go know the right people. You could just teach yourself to code and jump in. Mm. So it was actually more open than a lot of industries. And so you'd have people from very strange backgrounds, mm. like jumping into tech. Um, and I, I think that continues with Twitter, actually, because now it is a bit harder to get in. But you can find the people you want just through through social media. But it's good because I get to meet people who are interested in the same kinds of things. So yeah. that's like one thing for Asteroid. Um, like, we're like seven people now, including part time, and like most of the people, um, like they're people I knew professionally as well. But like we've been communicating on Twitter so often, mm. we talk about like stuff that other people don't care about, like node based software or like productivity growth or whatever. And the people who join are the people who care about those things. Yeah, <laughs> where you're like, oh my god, there's the zeitgeist and the the kind of the, the, the big trends in technology and science and you felt like you had to take part in it? Yeah, for sure. It was really exciting when it was happening, especially um, especially if you're part of like one thing which goes from like, you know, a Kickstarter project to like the multi-billion dollar company like Oculus. Like, you, you I mean, it's just too exciting to stay away. We often talk about how one of the difficulties that women may face in technology is that we don't necessarily have the, the, the role models or actually just the examples that, oh, it's possible. But you are very lucky to, to have seen that at a young age. I, I, actually, I definitely am. I think I, one of the benefits of being part of the Teal Fellowship is I met uh, women like that. So one of my heroes is like younger than me. She's 22. Well, she's probably 23 now. <laughs> she's, like, she's called Lisi Guo and she started this company called Scale API. And I, I think I started mine because I was like, well, if she can do it, then I can probably do it. So I, it is my theory about millennial women is that they grew up watching like Mulan and oh, yeah. <laughs> like all these movies which have these like really like strong female protagonists and then the world wasn't quite exactly as you expected. I've seen Brave. Um, and so, I mean, I was like, um, so one movie I really like is, you know, Mean Girls. Where oh, yeah. it's doing that, it's like Lindsay Lohan plays this like girl who's really good at math. But then she tries to be like a mean girl. Oh yeah. And, but then she goes back to math. And the message of the movie is to, is you know you shouldn't care about about doing that. You should just go and do your thing. Mm. So I, I was like a very naive kid. I was like, oh, I'm gonna be like Matilda and Lindsay Lohan in Mean Girls. <laughs> and I went and studied maths, and then realized that the world doesn't quite share that attitude. You know? So I like never encountered any kind of negative attitude to women in math. So I went to university and then they're like, oh, that's what men do. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, so you arrived, you looked at your class. And I was like, yeah, I like, expected like 50 50. Well, <laughs> like, and now? No, I was like the only one out of. Uh, it was, it was like, really? There was like 10 in the college and I was the only woman. Oh, wow. And and then people kind of expected me to be just kind of average or bad. But I was like, when I was in high school, I was like known for being like, really good at math. So I was like, how could they think this about me? <laughs> and so I spent that whole year just basically fighting to like. I like get really good grades and, and stuff but like eventually I gave up on that because I mean I, I did all right but I, I like eventually realized that wasn't the most healthy <laughs> attitude my, my high school friends growing up were like very into like female nerd hobbies which I think get completely overlooked so for example play like sims like mm. there's a giant sims fandom like women are like 60-70% of it I think 
um, just like writing stories about like fake families. I mean, it's, it's not the most admirable hobby, but it's mm-hmm. definitely as nerdy as something. It's like kind of the extension about. of playing with dolls, right? Right, right. In a way, and, like and, you know, like oh, mom and dad, and, and like, what like I you know, was doing. like the stereotype of like a male nerd into Starcraft mm-hmm. or Warhammer. Mm-hmm. It's very familiar to us, but where's the female nerd into Sims? Mm-hmm. Um, and then fan fiction's another one that was also very huge. Like lots of women on Live Journal. So all of those types of women who are into that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. I think, would love a career in tech. But then, I feel like the path isn't um, as well trodden, maybe. Yeah. And so but also we're not so. You have to create a narrative, and it has has to be passed down from generation to generation mm-hmm. um, of like the archetype of the male nerd and stuff like. You know, if you feel it in yourself, there is something to compare yourself with or something. I think for a lot of women, these are they, these have to be kind of excavated individually. Where is the community that will take me? Where is the where are the people that are like me, right? And we're in a very lucky moment of having the internet and all this accessibility um, where you can find these people. I mentioned that I kind of consider this whole topic to be a minefield and not because I think there are major secrets or taboos around it, more because there are two very prominent and very convincing narratives competing around trying to figure out why are women underrepresented in technology and STEM. Yeah, I think the women in tech story is like relatively undertold because mm-hmm. uh, you know people want to distort it to meet one of these two narratives and the, you know and so like the stuff like the women in the Sims community even is like something that's forgotten. Um, I it's also just like the types of women that you meet in tech are like very strange people generally. Mm-hmm. I mean, no offense to you or me, but like that yeah, you've got, you've got to be adventurous and creative to go into this new mm-hmm. field. The mm-hmm. types of women who do it are the nonconformists definitely. I don't consider myself to be necessarily in that in that category but i know that when i speak with with my friends who have more like traditional middle class jobs super educated women who work more in like health or education um areas like that um the things that for me are you know extremely interesting intellectually and an adventure and fun and thrill and i love it to them sound like super stressful uncertain (laughs) how do how can you live with yourself how are, how are you not going crazy? Right. And for me, I, I'm asking the same thing. Um, <laughs> so we can kind of presume that more and more people will have our lifestyles in the future, and that includes more and more women. So do you think it's going to change how women in general live? Do you think more people will have our private lives and our um, everyday choices um, is there is there a trend i mean i think technology is changing the complete um changing the idea of lifestyle in a very um, dramatic way mm. so the 20th century lifestyle is you know you buy a house you get married at 20 you work for a mega corporation your whole life and i think the interesting thing about technology is it's it's completely uprooted our lifestyle we have more urban living mm. you change jobs every few years um and i think there's a lot the kind of intersection of like the technological 21st century lifestyle with the private life is something that's really up for debate yeah like one interesting survey i saw was like in the u.s polarization politics isn't actually that strong except for gender issues so um you know um stuff like abortion gay marriage or um like um discrimination against women so it's like i think we actually do face a choice between what our private lives are going to look like and what that um it's like we're between two centuries i sometimes say that one (laughs) group is a little bit to the front and one maybe to the back in terms of just the calendar and or maybe it's just design. the choice in what the 21st century should look like should yeah. we have this um should we assume that our society is going to have very strong um, gender differences and have a role for men and a role for women or are we going to have this kind of 21st century society where everyone kind of everybody can be anything, <laughs> anything, can be anything. well my god i think we could go on until uh, we could. christmas we could um, go forever. <laughs> thank you so much for joining me this is Awesome. Um, And yeah, here's to um, a future uh, with a lot of happy women in technology um, where we can, you know, tackle complex issues, I think, in individual ways, like finding finding ways that that work for us. Yeah. Thank you.